So we've been doing a lot of different types of calculations um, in this unit. A lot of, from, from strong acids and bases to weak acids and bases, buffers, titrations, polyprotic, complex equilibria. And a lot of students have been asking um, me to make a video on, okay, when I first see a problem, how do I know what kind of problem it is? Because um, I know how to, how to do each, each of them, but I'm not sure how to classify them and know which information to use. So this video is going to be on how to classify the problems when you when you first are looking at it, right? Um, so first, I'm going to assume that you ha you have all of these memorized. You're able to identify, hey, this is the weak base one. The second one is a basic buffer. You should have all these memorized. If you haven't, pause the video, go learn those and memorize them, and then come back. So the way uh, I classify them. It's a two-step process, really easy, really simple. Um, the first thing is that you're going to look at the problem and identify all the acids and bases and whether they're strong or weak. The second step is, is you're going to look at the concentrations of those acids and bases and the amount of those in solution. That'll tell you uh, more information. And from these two things, that'll tell you what kind of problem that um, is being asked, and you should be able to solve it from there. So I pulled all the, um, or most of the calculation questions on the practice exams, and we'll kind of work through them all um, as examples. So once I do a few of them, if you kind of get the gist, feel free to stop the video. I won't be offended. Otherwise, you know, just kind of follow along and do these along with me, or even pause it before I go on to the next problem and um, see, if you, see if your idea of the problem and my idea of the problem match up. So, like I said, the first step is identifying the acids and bases and whether they're strong or weak. Or weak. And then the second step is, is looking at the concentrations. Um, so, in this problem, step one, we look, okay, great, I have acetic acid, which is a weak acid, and its conjugate base, salt, um, which is also weak. So, I have weak acid and its conjugate base, and then look at the concentrations, I'm like, okay, great, 120 grams. And they're just 328 grams. Uh, both are a fair amount, so I know I know I'm not dealing with a dilute case, so I'm not dealing with that. That's fine. Um, so I know that it's going to be a buffer, right? Weak acid conjugate base. It's going to be a buffer. Uh, but what kind of buffer? Well, I have 120 grams of the weak acid, and I have 328 grams, which is a lot more, of the conjugate base. So I know from this that it's going to be a basic buffer. So now I know, okay, to do the problem, I'm going to have to use the, um, the OH, the concentration of the hydroxide ion is equal to KB times CB over CA. I know I have to use that one. So just from, you know, a 10 second glance at the problem, I've already identified, okay, it's a buffer, it's a basic buffer, and I've already identified what equation I have to use. Um, if you look, KA is given to you, which you can easily convert to KB, so you know that. Um, you're given the, the grams and the uh, volume, so you can easily find the concentration of the B and the A. So super easy, you know, you pretty much solve the problem within 10 seconds or done most of the real legwork. Cool? All right, we'll go on to the next problem. Uh, try it for yourself now. If not, I'll uh, go through it right now. So one, you look at what's in, in the problem. I have barium hydroxide, uh, which is, you should know, a strong base. So and is there anything else? Nope. So I know this is a strong base problem. Uh, you look at the concentration, it's 0.05 molar, which is um, a fair amount. It's not dilute at all. Dilute is, you know, comparison to 10 to the negative 7. Um, and you're like, okay, great. So it's just going to be typical strong base, you know, um, typical hydroxide concentration is equal to the concentration of the base. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, not a hard problem. Uh, the next one will also do the two-step method. So again, look at what's in there. Also barium hydroxide, so cool, strong base, got that. Two, look at the concentration. Look, oh man, cool. That's 10 to the negative 9, a really small amount, really small concentration. So now I know I'm dealing with a dilute strong base, which means that you're going to have to set up the rice table with a KW um, or do the quadratic formula, whichever way works for you. The next one, we'll keep on going on. 
Um, we'll look at what's in there. So even if we give you like a fake asset or base like HX, um, it'll either tell you it's a weak asset or if it's like HX, you can pretty much always assume it's a weak acid um, because we're giving it to you as a unit, you know, and weak acids are a unit. Um, strong acids, you can't call it the spectator, it's just H+. Uh, you look at the concentration, it's 0.1 molar. So it's not dilute, um, so you know it's just going to be a typical, you know, uh, weak acid problem. Um, and the weak acid equation is going to be H plus equals uh, uh, Ka Ca to the one half power. The next one, um, you look at what's in there. Cool. So Hx, and I have Nax, which is the weak acid and the conjugate base. So I now have a buffer. But, it, but that's not all. If you look, and then you add 0.1 moles of NaOH, so you're adding a strong base into a buffer. So really, um, you, you it, it's a buffer neutralization problem. So you know you have your buffer, um, and you're adding a base to it, and you have to calculate, okay, is it still a buffer now, or am I, or have I used up the buffering capacity, and I just have strong base left? Um, so yeah, that's that kind of problem. Uh, this next question, let's again two two step it. Um, we have NH3, which is the weak base, and HCl, which is strong acid, and it even tells you it's a titration. So you know that it's a weak base, strong acid um, titration problem. Um, and I'll go over the titration problems in a different video. This is just a classification video, just so you can identify what kind of problem um, it is based off of the uh, wording. This next one should be pretty should be pretty glaringly obvious. Citric acid and the multiple Ka's should tell you, hey look, it's a polyprotic acid. Um, I know, you know, only two real equations for that, so you know, it should be pretty straightforward. Um, it's the one where you uh, average the pKa's um, to solve for the pH. So, um, this was actually not a calculation one, but you know, you just you know, you get the basic idea of what's going on. Uh, the, the that really applies to the next one. Um, so you know, you have H2PO4. You know, that's a that's you know a a, a form of phosphoric acid. Um, so that's a polyprotic, and it asks you to solve for the pH given its different pKa's. So you would plug that into there. All right. So hopefully this was helpful um, in helping you classify based off of the wording in the problem um, on what kind of problem it is. And if you have any questions, just let me know.